Good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of The Buzz. It's great to be here. It's the first work day in a brand new week. It's Monday, the 26th of March, 2018. My name is Patience Belo Kafo and uh, I welcome you to the program. Alera is here as well. Good afternoon, Alera. Good afternoon, Patience. Mm. Um, would I get to say happy Holy Week? <laughs> yes, this is the Holy Week. Happy That's very true. Week. Oh, happy <laughs> Holy Week to you too. Okay. All right. You know, when we come on the show, we'll bring you uh, news headlines, especially those ones uh, people talk the most about on social media. And today we have uh, three laid out topics that we'll be looking at. But before we get into our topics for today, let's first of all introduce our guests on the show this afternoon. Uh, second time on the show. <laughs> Uh, we feel indeed glad to bring her back on the show. Uh, she's a renowned activist, amongst other things, and she's also a social commentator. It's a great pleasure to have Queen Rose Ame with us on the show. Hi, Queen. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for coming again. Thank you. All right. And of course, we have our Monday regular here, Mr. <laughs> Ikem Okuhu. <laughs> he will defy all odds to be, <laughs> to on, be the on the show. show. And we appreciate that. Yes, uh, he is a public relations expert and also a social commentator. Thank you so much, sir, for coming Thank again. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, uh, very much. I think this platform has uh, provided some measure of fulfillment and venting opportunities for some of us <laughs> that have uh, bent yes. up issues about yeah. what is going on. So That's it's true. always a great pleasure to be here. All right. Thank you Thank so you much, for coming. Sir. And of course, you, the viewers, you're not left out. Remember, you can interact using our social media portals. Yes, using the hashtag the bars and Facebook www.facebook.com forward slash Galaxy TV and also on Twitter at official Galaxy TV, knowing that you could get to watch previous editions of the program via our YouTube channel that is Galaxy TV Nigeria. And of course, you said you can also send SMS to the number 0708740708. All right, let's go into today's program. Our first topic is on the analysis of the Dapchi schoolgirls uh, release. And we're all aware that Boko Haram insurgents over a month ago uh, kidnapped more than 100 schoolgirls in Dapchi, Yobe State. And the good news is that last week we were all greeted with the news that uh, uh, most of the girls have been returned back. They were brought back in nine vehicles and dropped outside their school at about 8 a.m. early in the morning by the insurgents themselves. Now we hear five of the 110 girls who were abducted uh, reportedly died of shock on the day uh, they were abducted. While one of them is left behind, one Leah Sharibo, because she has refused to renounce her Christian faith. Uh, what is to become of Leah is what we're waiting to see and all that. But first, before we get uh, your contributions, let's go see this video of what transpired when the girls came back. We begin today in northern Nigeria where most of the schoolgirls who were kidnapped from Dapti town in Yobe state have been released. Unfortunately, five of the girls are reported to have died as a result of trauma and one of them was not released. A correspondent who spoke to one of the girls and her parents reports that the girls were not well treated throughout their period in captivity. On February the 19th, 110 girls were kidnapped from their school at the Government Girls Science and Technical College in Dapti, sparking outrage from many quarters, including Amnesty International. Most released at 91, says the girls, and one boy were released around 3 a.m. through back channel efforts with the help of some friends of the country and without any conditions. Mr. Mohammed explains that the number of the free girls would be updated after the remaining ones have been documented. The girls, many of the students that were, that were released were not dropped in one place. They were dropped on the road and um, they went back, of course, naturally to their parents' houses. They are now being asked to, to come and be documented at the center. Uh, one condition that the insurgents gave was that they will be the one to drop the girls. Uh, once violence and confrontation was ruled out, 
uh, and the negotiation started, uh, there was a deliberate pause on the part of the military. In other words, it was agreed that there would be no force, there would be no confrontation. So that's why it was possible for them to drop the guns. It's part of the agreement that will release the girls, will not use any violence, will not have competition. I don't forget that the lives of these children are much more important to us than you know, any cheap military uh, victory. We begin today in northern Nigeria where most of the schoolgirls who were kidnapped from Dapti town in Yobe state have been released. Unfortunately, five of the girls are reported to have died as a result of trauma and one of them was not released. A correspondent who spoke to one of the girls and her parents reports that the girls were not well treated throughout their period in captivity. On February the 19th, 110 girls were kidnapped from their school at the Government Girls Science and Technical College in Dapti, sparking outrage from many quarters, including Amnesty International. Most released at 91, says the girls, and one boy were released around 3 a.m. through back-channel efforts with the help of some friends of the country and without any conditions. Mr. Mohammed explains that the number of the freed girls would be updated after the remaining ones have been documented. The girls, many of the students that were, that were released were not dropped in one place. They were dropped on the road and um, they went back, of course, naturally to their parents' houses. They are now being asked to, to come and be documented at the centre. Uh, one condition that the insurgents gave was that they will be the one to drop the girls. Uh, once violence and confrontation was ruled out uh, and the negotiation started, uh, there was a deliberate pause on the part of the military. In other words, it was agreed that there would be no force, there would be no confrontation. So that's why it was possible for them to drop the girls. It's part of the agreement that will release the girls, will not use any violence, will not have competition. I don't forget that the lives of these children are much more important to us than you know, any cheap military uh, victory. So okay, then, and um, that's actually the clip from um, the abducted um, um, Dapchi schoolgirls when they were that's released. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about this thing because it's something that's been trending on social media. Is it real or arranged? <laughs> because that's been a war on yes, social media. Yes, that's an ongoing war. war. Maybe to put the question in better perspective, when you saw this piece of news, what was the first thing? Like into your you know, mind. that came to your mind about the whole thing? Well, for me, it was a relief. Uh, although I still had my issues with how such a thing could ever have been allowed to happen again, given uh, what we went through during the Chibok the and Chibok the yes. so-called uh, security presence all over the north. Mm. But um, it was a relief. Because you were talking about 110 parents, uh, families of 110 people, 110 innocent people who, as far as that period was concerned, didn't know what their fate was going to be. Yeah. It was relieved that at least we saw some of them. Three, unfortunately, we lost. One was held back allegedly because 
She refused to renounce her, renounce her faith. I think I heard yesterday that she was eventually released. Oh, wow. Well, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. She hasn't. <laughs> if you're okay, saying so that, you're breaking the, the news. That's the, mm. the Bujoni fake news industry we have in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we still have a lot of questions to ask our security agencies. We still have a lot of questions to ask those who even supervise these security agencies. Why did this happen again whether it was arranged or not i don't i am not one of those who will believe that such a okay. thing that such a thing would arrange and mm -hmm. because i ask myself for what because it's a lives yeah in as much as the government may have gaps in their narratives yeah. and also in the approach their response strategy mm. but i don't think a government will go all out to arrange the kidnap of 110 people mm. kill five of them mm -hmm. and keep one behind for God knows what reasons. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't believe mm -hmm. any government, uh, except maybe people like the government in the Islamic, Islamic State of Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, ISIS. Uh, they are the people that may, you may say, okay, oh, these guys are capable of such things, but not this government. I don't believe it. Okay, right. let's bring my queen into this discussion. Now, based on all of this, you know, what we have seen happen before, and what has happened now? What would you say about the responsiveness of the government? Well, uh, I think everyone, uh, every human being, the the response to issues when issues arise, mm. that the proactiveness of our attitude towards issues most matters a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's one if we are assuming that the children are not missing or they were not kidnapped by the Boko Haram then we should also think of the alternative or the opposite of it that it, it is possible. Because the issues also that happened during the issue of uh, Chibok girls, and at the end, we discovered that those children were actually moved from their school premises. And also, uh, if you look at the scenario that around that surrounds the incident, this issue now is that these girls were, kidnapped, were moved by the Boko Haram from their school, uh, premises and the numbers of the girls that were given to us, the Nigerians, uh, some were say the government says 110, but they say 105. Then, also, in the course of trying to recover the children from the Boko Haram, mm -hmm. in court, they, were, they also were told that no ransom was paid. How did these children come uh, as in rescue from the hand mm -hmm. of the Boko Haram without no ransom. Mm -hmm. Is there any game behind this mm -hmm. that children will be kidnapped and the way the uh, where Chibok girls were taken and you were able to bring out these children successfully without any any ransom mm -hmm. dispatched? Well, the federal government on that, the federal government has said they didn't pay any ransom to get the girls released, but they relied rather on back channel, you know, negotiations, Promise. which, you know, uh, and, and which uh, ensured that the girls were, were what is a, what? These you know, are, that's back usually channel channel difficult for me to yes. believe in Nigeria uh -huh. now. Mm. If we have had frequent cases of kidnapping yes. um, in other parts of the country where the police, the security agencies will come out and say no ransom, was paid, it was through the intelligence and superior firepower of the police, this and that. But eventually, you start hearing stories from the families mentioning sums of money that, that were paid. Were, but were whether paid. a sum was paid or mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. is immaterial here. The important thing is that if it was through back channel negotiations that government used to re re rescue those ones who returned, mm -hmm. kudos to them. But Preventive issues, like she mentioned now, proactive security, mm. are things that this government should be thinking about. Mm. Especially because during that thing, issues were emerging that security agencies knew about these things ahead of the kidnap. Information was out that something that ugly was going to happen. Why was there no measures to make sure in place. it didn't happen or seeing that most part of the north you know is well i don't want to use the word volatile but you know has serious security challenges you would have expected uh that they beef up 
you know, the security, especially in schools, oh, since we already have the Chibok Asia on our hands. All right, mm -hmm. now, I, because something actually got me disturbed, and that was when um, the Minister of um, Information, Alajilai Mohamed, came out and said another figure, mm. because what we had then was 110 mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. and later when they said it was 113, mm -hmm. So we have something with our figures, not knowing the number of students that, were that have been to actually taken. kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Information management has been a problem here. It didn't start today. <laughs> Even when the Chibok case happened, you remember there was a challenge determining the actual number initially. Mm -hmm. And just like it happened now, what, what is happening now is the reverse of the Chibok matter. We politicize everything. If you remember during the days of Chibok, those who were in support of uh, the then President Jonathan actually claimed very strongly that there was no Chibok, that it was staged by those who are opposing the president. Now, those who are opposing this president are also pushing the narrative that the government actually staged this kidnap for some positive publicity, uh, publicity collateral. Mm -hmm. So, but things as serious as this shouldn't be trivialized with, you know, political sentiments and stuff like that. <clears throat> mm. But the numbers, the getting some of those numbers are a problem here. We have different statistics depending on who is talking. We don't research very well. Normally, these people have a team. In the security forces, they have a team. They brief the people in the Ministry of Information. If it is DSS and the police and the army that are working together, one person should be mandated to give the briefing to the civilian executives whose job it is to interface with the public. So where Lai Mohammed got his information may have been different from where the police people got the information and it may have been different from where the public Minister was getting the their information got, got his and where the, yes. so mm. it is a function of management. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if the figures were not accurate at initially, but when you hear the government speaking with one voice, mm. it tells you that there is a team. Mm. Okay. All right, now let's talk about the, the foreign scene right now because uh, the international bodies during the Chibok issue, we saw a lot of international bodies coming out, clamoring mm. for um, bring back our girls. Yeah. But this time around, the international bodies seems to be on a deaf ear. They're mm, not quiet. really, they're just so quiet about this whole thing. Queen, let's. Well, you cannot cry, uh, normally you, can't, you cannot cry more than the bureau. Mm. If we Nigerians are uh, claiming to be missing our children, the Chibok girls, and we're not working towards recovering the children. Some are the opinion that they are not missing. Some also believe they are missing. Some are like uh, condemning the attitude of the ex-president, or you are aware that these children are actually missing, and you're not making any effort. And other uh, civil society organizations that have been uh, shouting, bring out our girls, or making efforts to make sure government gives such attention so that those remaining girls are recovered or reconciled with the family. And mm. several times they are being abused by the police force and other government forces in the course of their campaign and so on and so forth. I believe if we put more efforts, we as Nigerians try to see the, 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 the importance of lives that were missing, irrespective, despite they are not or are directly brothers and sisters, yes. they could be anybody. Then the international body will also be in support to fight for us. Mm. But in the attitude where we put negligent and deaf ears to such things, mm. I think they cannot do much than okay. what we should. All right, Mr. Second, right. do you agree? Mm. Yeah, I agree. But don't also forget that it was not the international community that um, uh, spiraled the campaign for the bring back our girls. It was a young lawyer in mm. Abuja somewhere yeah. that created a hashtag on Twitter mm. and people latched onto it even before the BBOG group okay. came. came out. Mm. Somebody pushed it and it went viral on the social network and the BBOG now latched on it to push it. But you also should know that um, my people, they have this proverb that when evil endures for a long time, it takes the semblance of tradition. We are so used to these things, kidnapping, and they are not solved. Chibok is not fully solved yet. 
and this one is happening. So this one is riding under a larger issue of Chiba, which has gained ground. If you create two hashtags, if you raise two campaigns to bring back people now, Chiba is not solved and you're pushing this one. This one, um, it just won't click because we, we are almost immune. Mm. We are no longer shocked by such things because which, it's, it's yeah. happened before because also, it hasn't before and it has been happening thing. and that mm. is not good for us even though it has happened before i think that that forms the basis for what people are actually saying on social media i mean if we all agree uh this uh, administration buari's administration has had its fair share of uh, security embarrassments if you know what i mean now people have gone on ahead to dig out you know, facts. Uh, uh, let me quickly run the timeline, you know, of this whole uh, Dapche thing by us. Uh, on the 19th of February, uh, the girls were taken from their school. And um, on the 23rd of February, the Yobe state government announced the rescue of the girls. Uh, and of course, the parents came out and they, uh, they refuted that claim. And the government now came back again to withdraw that statement with an apology, if we all remember correctly. Now, on the 27th of February, uh, the military and the police had their own issue. They were trading uh, blames back and forth over the abduction of the girls. And on the 20th of March, that was when Amnesty International you know, uh, came into the whole issue and then said uh, that security agencies in Nigeria ignored warnings of a possible attack, you know, in Dapchi. That means they were told so ahead of time it. there was going to be an attack. Now, uh, the very next day, more than a hundred of the girls were returned. This smells foul play, if you ask me. And of course, we all recall that in December 2014, when the Chibok girls were taken, uh, was just a few short months to the 2015 election. presidential election. election. Here we are again with less than a year to uh, another general election, and now we've abducted girls again. You know, this is the reason why a lot of people, you know, are saying uh, there's foul play in this well, whole thing. Foul play, the, the whole idea of kidnapping people is foul play on its own. In the first place. In the first place. Then secondly, I don't think it smells good. It doesn't taste nice to point fingers at a sitting government masterminding a kidnap. From what, you're, what you just read out, information management is still a problem. Our security forces are reactive. That is their training. It's as simple as a policeman at a bus stop where you're not supposed to stop. Mm. He will allow you to break that rule and then come to arrest you. Mm. An ordinary wave of the hand would have, have prevented that thing from happening. Mm. And that's, that's true. Yeah, that is deep into our security strategy. We would want to hunt after crimi criminals instead of preventing them from committing the crime. Mm. That's a problem. And like I, I keep talking about information management. The social media has created a problem for our people. They are not hands-on yet on the speed of information flow and dissemination. Mm. You understand? They don't have strategies to track this thing, to capture it, or even to, to take advantage of that flow, that speed, for themselves. We are learning fast from other parts of the world. If you look at what is happening in the US, our people don't follow those things very well. The same way Donald Trump ignores certain warnings, if you follow what is happening in this uh, uh, Cambridge Analytica yeah. uh, issue, issue with Facebook, where yeah. we now know that he was actually hmm. given a briefing hmm. by CIA and FBI not to congratulate Vladimir Putin. Either he didn't read it or oh. he didn't think of the overall oh, implications, no, he went ahead to do that. The same way our people ignore certain things, hmm. either for lack of understanding or just because they are not oriented to do certain things intelligently. And it's a problem. Hmm. Hmm. All right, now, Mr. Ikem, do you think trading planes to actually solve security issues is the way out? We hmm. get to see the military and the police force trading planes. Is that the way out? It, it, it's taken as given. It cannot be the way out. On the contrary, it compounds it. Because once in a while you see police and those ones quarreling at a time they should be sitting in a war room 
sharing ideas, from sharing process. responsibilities yeah. on how to solve mm. some of those problems. Okay. When you trade blames, you are saying, okay, I'm not responsible for this, I'm not responsible for that. Who is? All of you have a role. The military, you are on ground there because the police has not been... Uh, it is no longer a police action. The DSS, you are supposed to be the underground world. But in those things, what causes all those uh, blame trade is somebody wants to take ownership of whatever profits, whatever publicity comes out of it. Police wants to be seen as having right. done this job. The mm. army wants to be seen as <laughs> being superior to the police. Mm. The DSS wants to be seen as the warehouse of all the intelligence. Mm. So they have all their spokespersons who rush out and share information they want to without be the first, first to collaborating. Break the news. Yes. Exactly. Mm. And yes. that's not what we need. But then she asked a, a, a salient point. A question rather you know what's the way forward are we going to continue paying ransom and indirectly we're empowering Boko Haram because that's what it means for as much as you keep giving them millions and of money you're giving them one spring up. Ex that's exactly business. more power to do to wreak more more havoc Queen but that the government really accept <coughs> that they really agree that the parents nobody would know. agree to that. Uh -huh. <laughs> they are not agreeing so mm. how would you solve the issue of that? Mm. But we do because know that they they negotiated because they brought the girls back themselves and, and according to the minister of information and culture lai mohammed uh it was one of their arrangements their agreement that they would drop off the girls themselves and you know already they declared a one week ceasefire which is why they can't be attacked by either the police or the military so there was negotiation Whatever they, they, they exchange the girls for is what it's we do not know. know. And you know, yes. you know, there are those times that a lot of us keep on, a lot of things that the government get to say, they keep on contradicting themselves mm. because they get to say, <laughs> um, we've actually solved with, uh, what's the word again, we've clamped down um, Boko Haram. <laughs> so how do you now get to do a like a ceasefire? With someone that's with a terrorist group that you've actually clamped I mean, down. Technically, yeah, technically, yeah. Yeah. technically exactly. thank you so much. All right, much, Queen, Mr. you want to say something? Yes, I think uh, uh, ceasefire of faith, in, of course, is not every issue or um, uh, crimes mm. are not really curbed down by exchange of fires and mm. so on. There are methods you apply to, to like bring this True. to the minimum level. Mm. But the issue we are facing in Nigeria, now we're not facing the truth. The government are not really telling the citizens the truth. How it will you now say you are negotiating with a kidnapper? Kidnappers are as good as armed robbers. Because in the course of kidnapping this girl, we've, we've also just understand or heard that some of these girls have lost their lives. Mm. What are you negotiating with mm. these kind of people? Mm. And it's, it's a way of encouraging others joining the group because they more. Okay, the we have Boko Haram. Who have his men, and is it the same Boko Haram that actually kidnapping these girls, or they've expanded, or they have other hidden mm -hmm. cults or mm -hmm. members within them or subsets. that, yeah, or that <laughs> really knows? executing mm. this uh, mm. behavior now and then? I think the best part, I believe, in the Western world, I don't think government in the Western world can negotiate with such people because if we are negotiating, who is standing between the 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 kidnappers and the government mm -hmm. before you negotiate releasing those girls they should be brought to book and face the law mm -hmm. then to eradicate such behavior or such people from the system okay instead of that all right let's see how people are reacting to what we're discussing uh this one says uh, this was a big plan from the federal government especially the apc for us to say that they are really working and give them support uh for the upcoming election comes uh 2019. uh this one says my view on this dap girls release i can say it was stage managed because an insurgency cannot risk their life for kidnapping a whole a hundred and 13, well, it's 110 school girls afterwards release them without a ransom. Please, let's tell, <clears throat> excuse me, let's tell ourselves uh, the gospel truth. Um, this other one, uh, this is from Victor Anyaku, says it's a pure conspiracy uh, by the APC-led government to earn undeserved credit, knowing fully well uh, that they are running a deceptive and despotic 
governance. All right, it's quite unfortunate at this point. We're arguing that the abduction is not foul play. This is my question. Security personnel were removed from DAPCHI on the day of abduction. Also, on the day of release, uh, security personnel were also removed. Every month, uh, we lose numbers of life uh, of Nigerian army in the hands of Boko Haram. Okay.